Hey, fellow nature enthusiasts. Welcome back to the place where we dive into the wonders of the natural world. Today we're going to explore the intriguing realm of toxin animals, creatures armed with potent venoms and toxins that serve as their survival tools. The first animal is the Gila. The Gila is a venomous lizard that's found in southwestern United States and Mexico. Gila monsters have a wide distribution from arid and semi-arid environments like deserts, grasslands, and rocky slopes. Gila monsters are typically more solitary and nocturnal. They usually appear in the shade during the morning or afternoon. These reptiles have a pair of venomous sacs located under the jaw, and a bite from them can be deadly to the prey. An important ingredient here is a substance known as helidermin. This causes the venom of the Gila to be helpful in immobilizing their prey. Generally, the Gila monster venom is not threatening to human life, but instead can cause pain, swelling, and other localized reactions. The next animal is the hooded potohui. The hooded potohui is a unique bird species found in the mountains of Papua New Guinea. The hooded potohui is a unique bird since it is a toxic bird. The bird itself isn't poisonous to digest, but its feathers and skin contain powerful neurotoxins. Similarly to scorpion toxins, the hooded potohui skin are from the same class as those found in poisonous dart frogs. A hypothesis supporting this is that the neurotoxins involved in the potohui are taken in from the bird's diet comprising a number of beetles and ants. The bird contains those poisons to deter the predators from feeding on the potohui. Lastly, indigenous people, such as those on Manus Island in Papua New Guinea, have been known to use the toxins from hooded potohui and other birds for hunting. The next animal is the cane toad. The cane toad, also known as the giant neotropical toad, or bufo toad, is a large amphibian native to Central and South America. Cane toads live in tropical and subtropical habitats. Cane toads are known for their toxicity, which is primarily attributed to the secretion of potent toxins from glands located on their skin. The toxins are a defense mechanism against predators, and they can cause harm or even be fatal if ingested. The main toxins in cane toads are bufotoxins, which include compounds such as bufagens and bufotinines. Bufotoxins can affect the nervous system, causing symptoms such as vomiting, convulsions, and, in severe cases, death. The next animal is the poison dart frog. The poison dart frog, which are small frogs with vivid colors that have their habitat in Central and South America, are most commonly found in the rainforests. The poisonous constituents of poison dart frogs is derived from the food of the frogs in the wild, particularly when they prey on some ants, mites, and termites. At home in captivity, where they don't have access to their natural food, they are not toxic. These substances manage to disrupt the normal functioning of nerves and muscles. Evidently, the scope of poison likeness among distinct species varies, whereby some of them may be more toxic compared to others. The poison frog's brilliant colors act as a form of apisemitism which literally means a warning signal to none other than the culprits, i.e. the predators, by indicating to them that the frogs are toxic. The next animal is the blue-ringed octopus. The blue-ringed octopus, a somewhat tiny and very venomous creature and lives in the territory that includes Australia and nearby areas. A blue-ringed octopus inhabits shallow water, tide pools, and coral reefs. Contrary to their size, it is known as the most toxic animal in the world. Its poison tetrodotoxin blocks the sodium channel of nerve cells, so the victim is paralyzed and can't breathe. There is no special antivenom for blue-ringed octopus toxin. Generally, these cephalopods like to hide in crevices or near the sand and are not aggressive. When feeling in danger, they normally exhibit their blue rings as a warning sign. The next animal is the boxfish. The boxfish are a group of types of fish from the family Ostracidae. These fish have box-shaped bodies, and their colors are also very appealing. It is not common or confined to a particular marine environment, but usually found in coral reefs and rocky areas, mostly in subtropical and tropical regions. Boxfishes generally have a unique defensive mechanism which makes them deadly in the marine ecosystem. A boxfish, if it is threatened or stressed, can release a toxic substance from their skin. This kind of toxin is called pahutoxin, which is used to shield itself from its predators. The toxins they produce are not only harmful to the humans, but also can cause skin irritation or other adverse reactions. The next animal is the platypus. The platypus is an amazing and incredible animal inhabiting only Australia. IT belongs to the monotreme group, which also includes echidnas. 
Platypuses are primarily aquatic and inhabit freshwater environments such as rivers and streams. Platypuses are carnivores and primarily feed on aquatic invertebrates such as insects and crustaceans. While the platypus is not considered inherently poisonous, males possess venomous spurs on their hind legs. The venom is produced by specialized glands in the thighs. The venom is not lethal to humans, but it can cause severe pain and swelling. The purpose of the venom is believed to be competition among males during the mating season. Male platypuses engage in aggressive behaviors, and the venom may serve as a deterrent to rivals. The next animal is the Sarissids. The Sarissids are short, insect-eating mammals that are members of the family Sarissids. They are found mostly in tropical regions, but a few settle in a number of habitats, like marshes, forests, and meadows. However, some species like the European water shrew or the northern short-toed shrew produce venom in their saliva. The venom of shrews is made by substances like proteins and enzymes, which help shrews to digest food and break down the tissues of their prey. The poison is being delivered through fine grooves under the shrew's lower incisors. The venom itself is not dangerous for human shrews are not regarded to be aggressive towards humans, and their venom is not potent enough to pose a threat. The next animal is the cone snails. The cone snails are a group of predatory sea snails belonging to the family Conidae. These snails have gained a reputation for their magnificent, ornate, and varied shells. The cone snails have their home on the coral reefs, in rocky areas, and on the sandy substrates in the tropical and subtropical waters. Snail cones' typical diet contains other mollusks, small fish, and the worms. Cone snails' venom is a complex blend composed of toxins, and it varies among species. The needle in the form of a harpoon, on which a radular tooth shoots out, allowing the snail to inject prey with venom. The injecting of the venoms can impair the nervous system and may have a paralyzing effect on its prey. The last animal is the box jellyfish, as their name suggests, are marine creatures which have cube-shaped bell. These animals are mainly known to inhabit the Pacific side of the Indo-Pacific Ocean, sharing the water volumes of Australia, Thailand, Malaysia, and Philippines. The unusual thing about box jellyfish venom is that it contains two toxins that can badly affect the heart and the nervous system. Some box jellyfish are considered to be among the most venomous animals in the world, and their sting can be severely painful and in some rare cases fatal. The poison may cause heart failure and respiratory distress, making first aid and appropriate medical attention an important thing if stung. And that wraps up our exploration into the world of toxin animals. I hope you enjoyed this deep dive into the strategies these remarkable creatures employ for survival. If you found this video as fascinating as I did, don't forget to hit that like button, share it with your fellow nature lovers, and subscribe.